This presentation aims at understanding Terry Eagleton's essay Capitalism, Modernism and Postmodernism. What it does is highlight the important points of this essay. Let us start off, therefore, by understanding the capitalist process. Means of production plus labor plus Vx is equal to V3, where Vx could be any variable cost. V3 is capital. Anybody who gets to enjoy the excess revenues is a capitalist. Anybody who thinks that the capitalist process is the only correct technique is a bourgeois. So we'll have to go ahead and look at a few photos and decide as to if we could call these people capitalists. Here are the photos. Now you can see the Ambani brothers and the Chaiwala. They're each owners of their individual enterprises and they surely get to enjoy the excess revenues that their enterprises make. So can we call them capitalists? Eagleton in this essay uses a few terms importantly, pastiche, parody, avant-garde, bourgeois, utopian, capitalism, modernism and postmodernism. Pastiche is literary, musical or artworks in the style of another artist, author, etc. Parody is exaggerated imitation. Avant-garde is a movement that follows new and progressive ideas. Bourgeois, I have already mentioned, is someone who thinks that the capitalist process is the only correct technique. Capitalism, Modernism and Postmodernism being the title of the essay is the primary subject of discussion and has been used extensively throughout the essay and as we go about understanding the essay we will surely very slowly understand the meaning of these terms. Now, we need to look at what Eagleton has got to say with this essay. Eagleton says that parody is not alien to postmodernism. He actually is trying to correct Frederick Jameson, who believes that it's pastiche, not parody, that is the appropriate mode of postmodernist culture. Eagleton says that what postmodernist culture parodies is the revolutionary avant-garde by its dissolution of art into a commodity. He says, parody exists but unconsciously. What is the essence of postmodernism, the aesthetics of postmodernism? As said earlier, postmodernism parodies avant-garde. Avant-garde is about anti-representationalism. Postmodernism believes that if art no longer reflects, it is because there is no reality which is itself not already an image, a spectacle or a crachetous fiction. With the dissolution of art into a commodity, or rather with the social reality commodified, what actually happens is that reality becomes the aesthetic. Now what does aesthetic signify? Aesthetic signifies texturedness, packaging, fetishizing, libidinalizing, etc. Now let us give picture to these terms and understand them better. Well, you can see the McDonald's logo, you can see a bottle of very expensive perfume, you can see a car, and you can see lovely chocolates. Now, these have been commodified, fetishized, libidinalized, etc. Now, the postmodernist culture was born with a stroke of the mass commodity culture, and hence, commodity culture is basically what postmodernism is all about. Eagleton goes ahead and says that if the unre unreality of the artistic image mirrors the unreality of its society, then that is to say that it mirrors nothing real and therefore does not mirror at all. What does avant-garde look at art as? Art to it is a practice. It is about performance. Capitalism, on the other hand, believes in the performativity principle. Modernity and History Modernity, Eagleton says, is opposed to nostalgia. What is nostalgia? Nostalgia is remembrance, history, basically. It believes in the present. Modernity believes in the present. Eagleton says that modernity and history play a ceaseless cat-and-mouse game, neither able to slay each other because they occupy different ontological sites. 
What is modernism? Eagleton says modernism is where art resists commodification, where the real world, the social world and the historical world is bracketed off. He says that it's a strategy where unfortunately by resisting one form of commodification, it falls prey to another form of commodification. Now, how does modernism resist or rather bracket off the real social and historical world? Eagleton says that to fend off such reduction into commodity status, what modernist work does is brackets off the referent or real historical world. It thickens its textures and deranges its forms to forestall instant consumability and draws its own language protectively around it to become a mysteriously autotelic object free of all contaminating truck with the real. Lastly, Terry Eagleton goes on to say that by bracketing itself from the social world, modernism might founder because if art really is a commodity, then it had better accept so. Only that which already is a commodity can resist commodification. Modernism struggles for meaning, and that is precisely what makes it so much more interesting. Postmodernism believes that the discrediting of representational epistemology is the death of truth. It persuades us to embrace the brute objectivity of random subjectivity. Postmodernism takes from modernism its fragmentary or schizoid self, while from avant-garde, it takes the disillusion of art into social life. So we can thus understand that postmodernism is basically a blend of modernism as well as avant-garde. Now, this was precisely what the essay was about. Thank you.